strongest sign yet of possible life beyond our solar system. Visual sighting, infrared sensors, uh, telescopic evidence. Now we have multiple sightings by multiple modes. And so the burden of proof has shifted. Last month, a new speck of light slid onto the Atlas screens, and it should have looked like any other comet. Only it didn't. The brightness graph rose in three sharp pulses. One, two, three then paused before repeating. It wasn't random. It wasn't noise. It was a pattern. When the very large array confirmed that same cadence on a frequency reserved for deep space, it was like hearing a deliberate drumbeat in a room that should have been silent. Michio Kaku stared at the waveform, took off his glasses, and quietly cried. Not from fear, from recognition. The universe just tapped us on the shoulder, and even he wasn't ready for the conversation. March 18th, 11.47 p.m. Local time, Mauna Loa. The ATLAS telescope caught a streak moving too fast for an asteroid, too smooth for a comet, and, here's the detail, decelerating. In orbital mechanics, that word is a ghost. Things don't just lose speed. Something has to be applying the brakes. By the time JPL's computers finished the fit, the trajectory pointed back to the galactic plane and farther, somewhere older than our sun. They tagged it, 3IE Atlas, 3 for the triplet pulse, IE for interstellar exotic, and Atlas because the questions it carries are heavy enough to hold up a world. Before coffee the next morning, every steerable dish on Earth was listening. The first spectra, the object's chemical fingerprint, looked like dirty ice smeared with metals forged in second generation stars. Its albedo, or reflectiveness, was one of the darkest surfaces ever measured, blacker than printer toner. Thermal imaging showed a cold shell at minus 180 degrees Celsius, but the core read warmer, like a slow furnace still ticking. Then, the low-frequency array separated the signal from the background noise, like filtering static from a radio call to hear the voice underneath and that voice was speaking in prime numbers and binary groupings. It's a clock you can set your existential crisis to. If you're a radio astronomer, the moment you see that pattern, your worldview doesn't bend, it folds. We've met interstellar tourists before. Oumuamua zipped past in 2017, a tumbling splinter that sped up without warning. Borisov arrived two years later, a ghostly comet dragging cyanide. Both were postcards. No return address, no postage paid. Atlas is a telegram. The hydrogen line transmission is deliberate. The signal structure is intentional. Picture opening your mailbox and the envelope clears its throat. That's why the phones at SETI haven't stopped buzzing and why security briefings are now scheduled before coffee. 48 hours after the public announcement, preprint servers were on fire. One camp claims Atlas is a crustal shard, a piece of a rogue super-Earth ejected long before our sun ignited. Another argues it's an exotic comet, an icy body laced with long-lived isotopes that act like a cosmic nuclear battery, powering the beacon. A quieter circle whispers probe, a marker buoy left in the cosmic shipping channel for travelers who never arrived. At an impromptu press conference outside Fermilab, Michio Kaku quoted Carl Sagan, then choked on the sentence. When reporters saw the tremor in his hands, the room went silent. Theater doesn't shake like that. When you strip away the static, the payload is stark. It's the digital equivalent of opening an envelope to read the letter inside. The message, a countdown. One, two, three, pause, three, two, one, Silence for 127 seconds, a prime number revered by the ancient Greeks. Then a burst, 4,096 bits forming a 64 by 64 grid, like a cosmic QR code. The pixels sketch a barred spiral, our galaxy, with a line pointing to the third rock from the star. Beneath it, a stick figure waves beside a five-point star. Either the universe just sent its most cryptic emoji or someone out there learned to speak both mathematics and human. Two days later, over coffee in a university lounge that smelled of chalk and adrenaline, 
Kaku wiped his glasses and said, We spend careers turning the cosmos into equations, and it answers with a lullaby and prime numbers. His voice broke. The equations didn't prepare me for hope. He compared the moment to seeing his daughter for the first time, the same vertigo of love and responsibility. We are no longer the only child on the playground, and the new kid knows where we live. NASA is fast-tracking Joe, a repurposed Jupiter orbiter stripped to a dish and a spectrometer, a device that will taste the light from the object to see what it's made of. The launch window is spring 2026. ESA's HERA mission will use Venus like a gravitational slingshot to arrive in 2029. A retired software billionaire is bankrolling a CubeSat swarm to flank Atlas and relay every whisper. Meanwhile, China's space agency filed orbital paperwork that on paper beats everyone by three days. Somewhere in Geneva, diplomats are arguing whether the Outer Space Treaty covers doorbells. Markets dipped, then steadied when analysts realized no one knows how to price first contact. Churches split. Some held vigils. Others warned of deception. TikTok looped the signal under lo-fi beats. A pop star sampled the triplet and hit the top 10 before astronomers could trademark the data. In Lagos, kids chalked the countdown on dusty streets. Walk through Akihabara and you'll find Gashapon toys that blink Atlas's pattern in red. The planet isn't panicking. It's listening. This isn't another exoplanet or pretty nebula. Atlas forces us to pick a persona on the galactic stage. Do we answer? Do we hide? Do we weaponize the conversation or turn it into poetry? The object reaches Jupiter in 2032, then slingshots into the black on a trajectory that won't return for millions of years. Our window to reply closes in less than a decade. Kaku believes silence is no longer an option. We've been screaming into the void with television and radar for a century, he said, but this is the first time something screams back. Drafts of humanity's reply range from Bach's Brandenburg Concerto to a zipped Wikipedia dump. SETI's post-detection committee wants greetings in 31 languages, followed by the Fibonacci sequence. Artists petition for a haiku that balances joy and caution. A linguist's cabal argues we should send silence, an intentional pause mirroring Atlas's own, to prove we're listening. Whatever we choose, the transmission must leave Earth by 2028. After that, the cosmic mailbox shuts. 3i Atlas is still out there, still counting down, still humming its triplet lullaby between Saturn and Uranus. An artifact older than continents drifts on, carrying memories of stars that burned out before our sun ignited. One day soon, we'll answer. Maybe cautious. Maybe reckless. Maybe just the word, hello, in every tongue we know. Until then, step outside tonight, look up, and imagine that faint rhythm crossing the dark. Somewhere, Michio Kaku is probably doing the same. Eyes wet, heart racing, waiting for the next beat.